sports diplomacy involves a country using sport to advance its strategic interests and policy goals. It is upset. Soft power, a term used to describe how a country seeks to achieve its objectives by appealing to and attracting others. It is simple to understand. Okay, next slide. So here it is. We know in our major, I'm talking about the economy of sports, that there are uh, international non-governmental sporting uh, organizations. The most uh, public or popular ones is the International Olympic Committee and the FIFA. So here it comes the difference between the governmental side and the, uh, the non-governmental side. Talking about the United Nations is the governmental side. The number of countries recognized by the UN is 193. So it's smaller. There is two, Palestine and the Vatican. The two non-permanent countries recognized, but they are not really permanent in this council. And the next one is International Olympic Committee 2206 and the other FIFA 2011. 2011. So the significance of these numbers is that sports organizations doesn't really recognize the uh, international governing perspective. They can recognize wherever a country or region if there is some characteristics based on their stadium, on the chart of, in the Olympic chart or in the FIFA stadium. So next slide. So this is some of the questions that we must ask if we are seeking for a good branding. So the first one is how the Algerians perceive the country. So the first question is how the Algerians perceive the country. Maybe it's a bit difficult because of the classification, social classifications. Maybe some poor people see their countries that there are no possibility of opportunity or opportunity to engage or to go forward. Maybe others know because they are privileged somehow, somewhere. So the next uh, question is how do the Algerians perceive the, the rest of the world? Maybe it's the same thing for them, especially Europe. Okay. How the third question is how do Algerians think they are being perceived by the world? And it is a bit tricky question to answer because sometimes they see us as maybe predators, maybe strugglers, maybe you know a lot of you know a lot of things actually, material or sentimental. <laughs> so the fourth question, how the Algerian actually seen? I'm talking about the real perspective of the others. And the next one is how do the Algerians want to be seen by the rest of the world? It is the right message because sometimes you have certain behavior and you can't really communicate your behavior well. So there is a misunderstood of your maybe principles or you know uh, behavior in general. So you have to have the uh, the right understanding of how you can transmit your behavior correctly to the others so it can be understood well and correctly. So the last one is why does it matter to, to Algerians how the rest of the world sees them? Maybe it doesn't matter for us uh, at the time, but maybe in the future. Because it's important when it comes to foreign investments, when it comes to uh, just exporting some product or other products, maybe if the uh, political intentions for opening the area for tourism, for maybe uh, local industry. It doesn't matter how the uh, the world sees us. Okay, next slide. Here is some uh, objectives of the branding, and the target is sometimes it's about talent, tourism, investment, exports. Talking here about the product and permanence. So the administration. Here is the main things or pillars of the national brand. Next slide. Be quick, just. So 
uh, one of the things that we can measure, because it's something sentimental, yeah, the, uh, the question wise is how can I measure this? Uh, actually, there is a, uh, a uh, platform of analysis that we can measure the sentiment or the feelings of people across different platforms. And one of them is social, uh, social, social platforms. Okay, next slide. Uh, the most important one is Twitter. This is really the application that we use to measure the sentiments of the others. Okay, and the scale is negative, neutral, positive. And we collect all these data and analyze them in order to get to the point or to the goal. Okay. Usually we see three the term of uh, free of speech or talking freely without any kind of pressure and we usually see that in a stadium stage. Stadium stage is a uh, free place that you can engage without any pressure, that you can just say things without any kind of you know, uh, second thing. So I can just say the first thing that comes out of my mind without even uh, maybe thinking of the consequences of this. But maybe sport policy, there is the dark side of the sport policy, and it's called sport washing. Sport washing is a term, is a new term actually. When a country uses sport, instead of being diplomatic thing and positively communicate with the other nations, we usually just wear the white you know, clothes that we are just clean. It's just like money laundering. It's like the same with money laundering, and, but this one is with nations. Like, for instance, what the, the, the Western uh, said about Saudi Arabia and the question of killing the journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, for instance. So they are trying through sports to communicate with the world positively that we are just a peaceful, uh, peaceful country that support the sport practices wherever these similar sporting events. So we are trying to do that in order to reach some kind of message to the others. But it is really the downside of the sport diplomacy. Sometimes you communicate about things that you don't have, even. Okay. Open minded. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. So here, another point. Besides sport washing, is the double standards of the international sporting governance bodies. Sometimes they act or react on some nations badly, like Palestine, for instance, and it is something that really holy for us, but something that we believe in because we've been through things like that in our history, in our revolution history. So we are believing in that, and sometimes when you just come across the, uh, the support of Israelis as a country, as, uh, as an occupied, something like that. So you feel that it's not the quite absolute truth, because they hide something. And with the financial support, maybe, of these organizations, I'm talking here about the most popular organizations, International Olympic Committee and FIFA, maybe with the pressure of funds, maybe with the pressure of their, their existence even, they support this country, maybe if, even if it's not really uh, ethical or in a good manner. Okay, next slide. So here is the scale or ranking score about nations who are, you know, the first at the top 10 branding nations. The first one is Japan. Japan is number one because a lot of a lot of aspects, a lot of perspectives, and if. Even if I ask you, what do you think about Japan? Maybe it's precise things, you know, electronics. Maybe the first time the things that come to your mind about Japan is that they are well disciplined. They respect time. They are, you know, punctual. They, uh, they are aesthetic people, you know, they, they, they appreciate that. And it is the country of you know. This is the only example that they have. So, uh, our country, I think that doesn't exist even there. So, well, it's based on this uh, site, EPS sauce, okay? It is a special like 
a specialized uh, site in measuring the brand emission uh, scale. And uh, for the 36, I guess, is Egypt. 40 is Morocco, unfortunately. Algeria uh, doesn't exist, actually. <laughs> yeah, for the 60 or 70 countries existed. Uh, 45 is Emirates, and 54 is Saudi Arabia. Okay, next slide. So, the Algerian contribution. Actually, there is a political intention, and it is clear, but the problem is with implementation. So, one of the contributions of the Algerian uh, government, talking about government, to show that they are, uh, show the willing of the country to open uh, new, maybe, uh, perspectives for people through sport. One of them is hosting successful mega sporting events like Mediterranean and Arab uh, Games, etc. Naming a international, a national stadium, naming our national stadium with the foreign name is Nelson Mandela, just to reach this uh, African uh, belonging. And it is just an icon for struggling, it's an icon for uh, patience, it's such a it's an icon for liberation and freedom. This is really what the naming uh, of this uh, stadium means. So, the next one is construction of five new major stadiums, and it is really uh, an absolute uh, achievement for us as a country. A partnership with sport movement through different kinds of support, financial support, human resources support, the sport facilities support, and even with the uh, legal environment where they set the whole law framework to act properly without any problem. So next slide. Uh, here is uh, here are the uh, international sporting event organized by Algeria during maybe uh, even after its independence. So next slide. Oh. So there are some representatives of Algeria uh, in the international sporting government. Uh, Pirat is one of them. There are too many others, but actually this is one that still remain, you know, standing without any pressure. <laughs> Okay, uh, a lot of them, and the most, for instance, uh, the lack of for instance, okay, there are plenty of them actually. Yeah. And this is, they are the ambassadors of Algeria outside. Okay, next slide. So, some dark points of our country, unfortunately, we are living with them. Political instability. Political instability is one of the struggles that we are living today because there are no continuity in the strategy. The regime that comes, you know, follows certain strategy, and after that, the regime, the second regime, follows another strategy, and so on and so on. Okay, the good faith and bad implementation. This, this is what we are learning. Maybe good faith really doesn't matter when the implementation is not there, because they are, you know, two sides of the same coin. Okay. So, absence of a long-term strategy. This is the problem of continuity and sustainability, even. You know, the right term is sustainability. Not a responsible behavior for some people, maybe, maybe that all are just working for some uh, foreign agenda, maybe. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, and the fast political change, the fast political change make us maybe in a position where, where you have to select the side that you are with. Because if you are Isolate yourself without any kind of support. I'm talking about even the MENA region. MENA region means uh, Middle East and North African countries. Here in North Africa, we have some competitors, not competitors, but misunderstood of neighbors. neighbors. Unfortunately, this. So, a lot of unfortunate here. Okay, next slide. The conclusion. So, the conclusion is like. In a globalized, in the globalized world, international sport continues to grow in terms of quantity of sports, in number, number of events, number of participating countries, number of participants, number of spectators, whether 
It is industrial or amateur and corporate sponsorship. Understanding the relationship between international sport and diplomacy plays an important role, an important part in the understanding of the impact of international sport on the national branding. But perhaps more significantly, coming to understand the ways that international sport is used and instruments of diplomacy by governments can generate important perspective conclusions that can enable governments to use sport for diplomatic purposes more effectively. And it is a lesson for our government, maybe uh, the rest is just, you know, some uh, pages or just some titles of the bibliography of, 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 or the books that I have used for the preparation of this you know, intervention. The next slide. Okay. So it's based on the new generation, how they see the future. It is actually uh, a bright future. If they think they are can, uh, they are able to change things, and it is a dark one if they are still in their you know uh, maybe the old style school or something like that. If they want to wherever you want, but if you just see things in a bright way, you can change, do some changes. Everyone in this major, we are here in the sports major. We can do things better. Maybe with a vision, with you know, talking to each other, with you know, uh, implementing things that we uh, planned. Now there are a lot of things that we need to do, and hopefully I did what I did to do. You know, like they say, you gotta do what you gotta do. Thank you.